occupier's city of Mariupol. The siege has lasted more than a month. According to preliminary data, between 130 and 150,000 civilians remain there. Those involved in evacuating Mariupol residents to Ukrainian controlled territories say that the Russian military confiscated their transport several times, and it was used to take people either to Russia or Crimea. The third time they confiscated our buses in Melitopol, and those buses went to Crimea and transported people again. In other words, they take our buses and evacuate people to Russian territories in such a deceptive way. When the residents come out, they say, yes, the Ukrainian transport, yes, we were promised evacuation. But it turns out, when they arrive at their destination stop, that this is somewhere on Russian territory. All the way along. No one tells you where you have been transported. You cannot leave the bus at any moment. Part of my family and I were able to leave Russia because we immediately refused to go to a refugee camp. But such an opportunity not everyone has. All the Ukrainians who were going with me did not want to go to Russia. According to Vadim Bochenko, the mayor of Mariupol, 33,000 residents have already been forcibly removed to Russia. The Russians select whom to take away, in specially organized filtration camps. According to the Commissioner for Human Rights in Ukraine, there are about 10,000 people currently held there. The procedures are slow there. The enemy is interested in covering its positions with leave force, the civilians of Mariupol. At the same time, the Russian media reported citing military sources about 700,000 people taken to Russia, including 131,000 children. Lyudmila Denisova, Human Rights Ombudsman of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, on Telegram. According to the Donetsk Regional Military Administration, Russian occupiers' filtration camps are located in occupied Novozovsk and also in seized Dokuchayevsk and Manhush. Artem was filtered by the occupiers, so he could go to Europe. His 16-year-old brother was killed in Mariupol during shelling. There's such an auditorium, a mass of people with animals. They slept on the floor. They registered you in a DPR database, take your fingerprints and take pictures of you from all sides. Then they give you a paper allowing you to enter Russia. The guy says attention is paid to tattoos, especially to Ukrainian symbols. In addition, searches for traces of weapon recall on forearms, searches in phones and extorting any information about ties with the Ukrainian military. Tam was also interrogated by the Federal Security Service of Russian Customs. He went to Finland. The dog that checks at the customs had the letter Z shaved on it. Cups with Putin on them. Pure fanatics. They asked me why I didn't want to stay in the camps and go to Europe. Vyacheslav left Mariupol on foot on March 22 and went to Zaporizhia. The man walked 26 kilometers in one day. In total, he spent three days getting to the area not occupied by the invaders. He refused to go to Russia. Well, they ask, where do I go next? Kind of check in. They say go through registration and either go to Donetsk or Rostov. Departure is centralized. So I said, why would I go there? Well, they say you can get help there. I said, first of all, thank you. You helped me enough. And secondly, I have no one there. However, there are more and more reports in social networks about the search for relatives who refused the so-called evacuation to Russia. People share their experiences of the horrors of filtration. I don't know where my mom is now definitely. I only know that she refused to go to the so-called DPR when her whole hospital was evacuated to filtration camps. She refused and now I definitely do not know where she is or if she is there at all. Ksenia Astafieva on Facebook. Mariupol still remains without communications and access to Ukrainian resources. According to Oleksiy Arestovich, advisor to the head of the office of the president of Ukraine, at the moment it is impossible to deblock the city militarily. Thanks to humanitarian corridors from Mariupol to Zaporizhia, more than 75,000 residents were able to leave the city as of April 1st. Reported by Roman Smoller, Yulia Bezborod,